Hello my Elven Warriors and welcome back. Today I'm going to be making the Powerpuff Girls. But realistic? I'm all out of clay so I'm going to need to flatten some. I'm going to make three equally sized balls, one for each of the puffs. I decided I wanted one of them to have a super creepy looking mouth and uh, that one ended up being Buttercup. To get the creepy mouth shape I'm going to excavate with the palette knife. And then switch over to a round gougy tool to excavate even further. I'm going to smooth the inside of the mouth out with the small side of a ball stylus. Then I'm going to add the throat hole by gouging with the ball stylus. Some rolled out snakes of clay get smooshed on and smoothed in with the ball stylus so that the teeth have something to go into later on. Using my largest ball stylus I gouge in some eye holes for the eyeballs. Then two pre-baked half circles of clay get stuck into the eye holes where bacon bond will hopefully hold them on. To make the teeth I roll out tiny balls of clay, smash them flat with my palette knife, and then squishy smushy on different sides of the teeth to make teeth shapes. Using a multitude of tools, I squish and smash a snake of clay flat against the eye to attempt to make an eyelid. Then I roll out another snake of clay. Use the ball stylus to smush it flat and try and make the eyelid look a little less incomplete. For Blossom, I'm carving her teeth in using a angular pointed silicone sculpting tool and I'm gouging and pushing and prodding at the clay to make teeth. Bubbles' mouth has a U-shape that I smashed in using a small end of a ball stylus. I tried to make them extra realistic by giving them nose holes and ear holes using a ball stylus to do so. They ended up not looking very Powerpuff girly, so I uh, covered it back up and decided to do without. Using a pair of tweezers, I insert the pre-baked teeth into Bubbles' gums, giving her a unique smile. If you look at the cartoon, the Powerpuff Girls' bodies are very tube-shaped, so I'm going to be making them tube-slash-bean-shaped. The arms are made by inserting a long piece of aluminum wire through the torso and bending it into place. I make the legs by doing pretty much the same thing as the arms, except I put bacon bond on the legs to hold them in place. I wrap the aluminum wire with some tiny floral wire to give the clay something to bite onto, and then squish and smash into a round tubey shape for the legs and arms. I decided I wanted each of the girls to have fingernails on their one finger, hand, nub, 
I don't know what you'd call that. To make the fingernail, I squish a ball of clay flat and smoosh it into a toenail shape. And then I use a different sculpting tool to carve in fingernail lines to give them the weird fingernail lines that fingernails have. Then after a quick bake in the oven to cure the fingernails, I insert them using tweezers. Then after a quick bake in the oven to save my progress, I use some bacon bond to adhere the fresh clay to the cured clay. The Powerpuff Girls wear something that resembles Dobby's potato sack. So I have to patchwork the dress and blend the edges to make it look as smooth as possible. The lower part of the dress is made using cos clay so it has a little bit more flexibility so it doesn't break. Each of the girls has a black belt, so to make the belt I'm going to cut a strip of clay and wrap it around to make the belt. I decided that realistic belts need realistic looking buckles, so I'm going to lay a snake of clay into a belt buckly shape and then I'm going to press in a texture using my silicone sculpting tool to make it look like hammered metal. Their shoes are just little lumps of clay that I stick on the ends of their legs and carve soles into using my palette knife. Bubbles has two pigtails and to make sure they don't snap off I put armature wire in the center. To adhere Bubbles' wig cap to the top of her head, I put some bacon bond so that the fresh clay and the baked clay cure together. Then to give her a hair part, I used my silicone sculpting tool to carve one line down the center of her head and wiggle it back and forth to give it an uneven hair look. Then using the same silicone sculpting tool, I carve lines in to make it look like hair. I roll out a log of clay to have a point on one end and then I smash it flat to make her bangs. Then I blend it into the rest of the hair using my soft silicone sculpting tool. And then I proceed to carve more lines in to make it look like hair again. Blossom's hair is made by taking a log of clay, rolling it out, smashing it flat. and using my palette knife to carve in little sections where the hair shouldn't be. Then I use my silicone sculpting tool to repeat the hair line process. To make her bangs look more like bangs, I roll out tiny little snakes, cut them really short, and then blend them into the rest of the hair to make it look more like hair. Buttercup's hair wound up being the hardest for me to do. I repeated it multiple times and then eventually forgot to turn on the camera for the last attempt. To make Bubbles' pigtails, I roll logs of clay to a point and then insert the armature wire into them to give them some structure. Then I make some scrunchies by rolling out some worms of clay, wrapping them around the base of the hair, and blending them together. Blossom's ponytail is pretty much the same process as Bubbles' pigtails, except on a larger scale.
To reduce Buttercup's creepy smile, I stick a tongue in there and now she looks more spunky and less creepy. And a small cube makes a little joining section between the two bows. Using an angled silicone sculpting tool, I attempt to add some wrinkles by indenting some lines into the bow. The puffs all have the same skin color, so I'm going to start with Buttercup. Several thin layers of skin tone go on, and then we move to the socks. Their leggings get several unthinned coats of pristine white. To paint their shoes, I used the same color I did on their belt. A bone white for the fingernails, and a bronze for the belt buckle. I made the bronze paint by mixing gold paint, red paint, and green paint. Buttercup's dress gets several coats of vibrant minty green. Their eyes and teeth all get a very thick coat of pristine white. Bubbles' dress is a very pretty sky blue. And Blossom's dress is a very pinky pink. Buttercup's irises are the same color as her mint green dress, painted into circles. Bubbles' irises are the same color as her sky blue dress, painted into circles as well. The same process we went through for the other girls gets repeated on Blossom's eyes. A bubblegum pink for Bubbles' mouth, and Buttercup's tongue. Some more jet black makes the color of Buttercup's hair, and a Ron Weasley orange for the entirety of Blossom's hair. The yellow paint I use does not like to cover very well, so Bubbles' banana yellow hair gets several coats to cover all the way. A nice vibrant cherry red to cover up the dull gray of Blossom's bow. And then a nasty looking sepia wash across the teeth and fingernails of all the girls. The girls are just about done, so the final step is to cover their eyes and Buttercup's tongue with a coat of UV resin to give it that glossy shiny look. To make the base that the girls are going to stand on, I cover up some crummy styrofoam with some plaster. Then it gets several coats of bubblegum pink, followed by a cherry red across the corners and edges of the base. I pin it into the shape of a heart in the center. Then I paint one more hollow heart around the center heart to make the base look like a Valentine's card. It looks like a Valentine's Day card. Then I'm going to clean up the edges using a razor knife and snapping off the excess plaster. Blossom ended up way too top heavy to stand on that tiny little wire I gave her. So I'm wrapping a thicker gauge of aluminum wire around her and she's going to be floating instead of standing. To cover up the wire I'm using unrolled cotton balls to make it look like a cloudy jump. Now I just gotta glue down Buttercup and Bubbles. To clean up the edges the rest of the way, I use the same bubblegum pink I used before. And I think that's about it. We're on to the reveals.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.